going to go through the hospital as a command system because it most kind of closely resembles what you guys would use. Um, we've looked at several incident command systems for uh, extended care facilities, long-term care facilities and that, that have been developed in California and Florida. And to be honest, I don't really like any of them. They're, they're too complicated. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a bare bones introduction to incident command, and then you can kind of take some of this information back. And uh, if you haven't uh, based your emergency response procedures and plans off the incident command system, then this will kind of help you get a jump start on how to approach that. And I can certainly help you out with places to go to get more information. Um, we, as, as I mentioned, I'm from Paratus Solutions. We actually uh, coordinate a long-term <coughs> care uh, preparedness committee for the Central Ohio region. Um, we've worked with them for about, about 16, 18 months now. And uh, this past year, we focused a lot of attention on, on evacuation. And in most healthcare facilities, when it comes to evacuation, uh, they focus on getting patients from their rooms to the front door. And that's where a lot of the planning ends or to their rooms and to a staging area just outside the facility. And that's really where the planning effort kind of ends. And that's when you start running into issues like you ran into uh, a couple months ago, where you haven't developed a system or an organized process to make sure you know where you're sending your residents and that they're going with their charts and their medications and, and those sorts of things to make it easier for those on the receiving end to continue the high quality care that you provide at your particular institution. So we know a lot about what you guys face, and we know, you know, preparedness isn't the highest thing on a priority list. It seems like there's probably a disaster every day within your institutions that you're all dealing with. And so carving out time in your busy schedules to do preparedness work um, is, is a challenge, um, especially since you guys don't get a, a large chunk of funding uh, to help you out as preparedness efforts. So uh, I do appreciate you guys coming today and, uh, and spending a few hours with us. Okay, uh, so what is the, the incident command system? Now, we, in the healthcare world, they call it HICS, or hospital or healthcare incident command system. What's that? And that's, and, and just so you guys know, I live uh, just on the other side of Mansfield there, so I'm kind of a, a local guy. So when, if I make any jokes about us all being HICS, I'm, I'm included in that. Well, so. uh, but uh, in the healthcare world, we call it HICS, or the hospital or healthcare incident command system. But really, you can just drop the H. Incident command system is, is the incident command system. What I'm going to talk to you about today is the same incident command system that police use and fire use and the health department uses and that sort of thing. In the healthcare world, especially in hospitals, we like to feel special, so we put an H on the front of it and call it X. And, and we, but incident command is incident command. It's the whole reason we're learning it, because everybody uses it so we can respond better to various disasters. All right, it's a management system, okay? So incident command is not a plan, it's not a procedure, it's the management system, the backbone of when you go to implement your emergency response plans, how your response is organized, and uh, to make sure that you're as effective and efficient as possible when you're responding to a disaster. And it's all done within a common organizational structure. Okay, I've already mentioned a couple of times that you guys should use incident command during disasters, the hospitals using it, the health department, uh, the EMA, um, has the whole county plans set up to fall under the incident command system. All right, the state operates under the incident command system. The federal government operates under the incident command system. So you all, it's all just everyone playing together in the same sandbox. All right, so um, you guys all, all heard of 9-11, right? How well did the uh, local response go during 9-11 uh, there in New York City? How well did that go? Not well. Not well. What were some of the issues there? Fire trucks parked too close and got smashed by the building. Yeah, yeah. Who knew long before the buildings were going to collapse, or long before the buildings collapsed, that that was going to happen? Engineers. Engineers. Yeah, they knew the structural soundness of those buildings, and and uh, early on in the event, some of the civil engineers were out there going, "Man, they need to get out of those buildings when it comes down." Who else kind of saw the buildings getting ready to collapse? Law enforcement. The law enforcement guys. Uh, have all the helicopters and they're flying around the buildings and they were trying to get people off the, the roofs of the buildings and they started seeing the building shake and they knew, man, this, this is not good. These buildings are probably going to come down. So they called down their command channels and through their command and control structure and said, get all the cops out of the building. And they did, for the most part. And that's why you see the vast majority of the deaths occur from fire response personnel. 
because at a local level, New York City is notorious for the police and the fire departments not liking each other. And they use totally separate communication systems and they use totally separate command and control structures. And so at a local level, you had these two organizations, or these two agencies that were responding to the same event, but because they were not using a common organizational structure, one agency suffered a significant amount of loss or another agency did. Okay. How about Hurricane Katrina? How well were things coordinated and organized there? All right, not, not so good, okay? Um, you had local governments that were kind of doing their own thing and operating under their own you know, command and control structures, and you had a state government that was not really communicating and, and coordinating very well with them, and then the federal government certainly wasn't helping out all that well uh, either, okay? So in those two examples, we can see where local partners using disparate systems, response didn't work out so well, and then uh, we can also see response organizations at different levels, local, state, and federal, using different systems, calling things differently, working in you know, their own separate ways, and then not working out real well. All right, let's fast forward to Joppa, Missouri, May 2011. Have you heard any horror stories or bad stories about people being stranded or uh, things not being coordinated very well, they're not getting resources in enough time? Have you guys heard anything about that? No, right? So why do you think that happened? <coughs> Gotten better. What's that? Gotten better. We've gotten much, much better as a country using the incident command system. All right, 9/11. Prior to 9/11, there was only a handful of organizations out there that required just a couple of folks to really even use the incident command system. It's basically, if you were involved in a hazmat incident, OSHA said you have to use incident command. Other than that, it was just kind of a recommendation. But after 9/11, the federal government kind of learned from crack dealers, right? So how does a crack dealer get you hooked on a crack? They give it out free first, right? No strings attached, here's some crack. Well, the federal government did the same thing with preparedness dollars. Right after 9-11, we started pushing all this money down, and the federal government said, sure, go spend, go crazy, here, here's money. We're not gonna have no strings attached, just buy whatever your community needs. And for the first couple of years, that's what everyone did, right? We just had this conversation this morning. The funds came down, and we bought the fire trucks, and hazmat vehicles, and tents, and all that. And we didn't have to do anything for that money. Well, then after a year or two, the, the government said, you got to start training your people on incident command. If you want to keep getting this money, everyone has to be trained in incident command. And that's exactly what happened. And it's turned out to be a great thing. Okay? That's a joke about the drag dealers. I apologize if that was some dark humor there. But essentially, that's what happened. We still want to keep getting our federal preparedness dollars to come down. And so in order to do so, Every fireman, every police officer, everyone that works in a hospital, or any of the support agencies has to get trained in incident command. And it's working really well. When you look at what's happened in Missouri and some of these other larger tornado situations we've had this year, you're not seeing what we saw in 9-11 or even in 2005. We're getting better as a country in this. All right. So incident command actually started in the 70s. Um, and it was all a result of the big wildfires that were happening out in California and they had all these different fire agencies working together and again, they weren't really working together and they were all kind of doing their own thing. So they came up with a common system that they would all fall under uh, in response to uh, these big wildfires. So in the 80s, um, the healthcare systems out in California sort of adap adapted uh, incident command to their particular world, to the healthcare world. And uh, so it's been used uh, you know, since the 80s in healthcare. Okay. They made a lot of changes to it in the, in, you know, right after 9-11, and so now we're at uh, version 4 of the hospital incident command system. Now I'm, I'm going to provide you with the actual hospital incident command system, we're just going to keep it at a, at, a, at a higher level today. But when we're responding to, to disasters, we've covered a lot of this already, that disasters are not business as usual. Okay. So a lot of times when we talk to healthcare institutions about incident command, like, you know, why do we have to learn this whole separate system? Why can't I just continue calling the person that's running the, the institution, the administrator? Why can't Joe just do the, the handle the supply stuff like he always does? And why do we have to call him the logistics section chief and, and all that kind of thing? And it's because if you had an army of people that was just sitting there waiting for a disaster to occur, and as an organization you could respond to it all by yourself and manage the whole thing all by yourself, then you could get away with it. You could operate like you do every day. But the fact of the matter is during disasters, you're not. You're not going to function by yourself. The EMA is going to be involved, police, fire, Red Cross, amateur radio services, the hospitals, all these different agencies. 
that all have their own language and their own management structures on a daily basis. So we all have to fall under the common management structure. All right, so emergency response is not business as usual. The hospital and command system is really important for hospitals to comply with regulatory requirements. Anybody here at Joint Commission facility? Okay, you probably have to demonstrate uh, if you're, whether you're a hospital or a long-term care agency that you train your staff in incident command and that you use it to meet joint commission requirements. Um, M. Tallow mentions it. Um, HIPAA talks about incident command. OSHA, when you're responding to disasters or emergencies, mandates the use of incident command. The National Fire Protection Agency. So there's a lot of organizations that say, hey, you have to do this now. Okay, so it's not just about grant funds anymore either. But more importantly, it's important for all healthcare institutions to use incident command and to train their staff so that it assists you with the hospital or your agency's uh, planning and response. Okay, so you'll be able to work together as a, as a county um, and as a region and, and all of your partner agencies that you might work with. Okay, it facilitates all this coordination and response. So this is what the incident management team, when it's all broken down for hospitals, kind of looks like, unless you've done some smart things and modified it. And you can really kind of do this as long-term care agencies as well. Once you get some information, you can see how as an organization you can break this down. All right, so the incident management team in, in, in the uh, in incident command is split up into five groups, okay? So you have a command section, you have an operations, planning, logistics, and finance. And so if you assign people to those roles to oversee those major sections, you're gonna ensure that you've covered all the things you need to do as an organization to respond to a disaster. So when you're responding to uh, an evacuation, what are some of the things that you're gonna have to do? Let's list some tasks out there. Name off some things. So you're evacuating the whole facility. What do you have to do? What are some of the things you have to make sure you accomplish? Ready for transportation. Transportation, right? Okay, what else? Contact with power attorneys, families. Contact families. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be it's a lot of folks to call, right? Okay. What Adequate else? Adequate staff. I'm sorry? Adequate staff. You're gonna need more staffing, right? Okay, what what if happens at two o'clock in the evening or uh, in the morning? You certainly aren't gonna have a whole lot of staff to help out with all that. So get more staff. Or even during the day. Alright, what else do we have going on? Supplies? Gonna have to arrange supplies, right? Alright, what else? Coordinate records and go with the patients. Records. What else? Have a tracking system for where they go. Track where people are going. Outstanding. All right. There's six major functions right there. That's going to be a lot of work. What else we got? Where are they going? Where are they going? <laughs> so we call in a bunch of ambulances, and we're ready to track where they're going to or track where they're going to go. But we haven't figured out yet where they're going. That whole destination planning. What else? Do, what else? Somewhere down the road is finances. Finance, right? Yeah. If there's money involved at the very end, can you get reimbursed for anything? Outstanding. Thank you so much for mentioning that. What is FEMA's main function in life? Does anybody know? Why did? Why is there a federal emergency management agency? What's their main function? In life? You're not allowed. At the federal level. Are they really a response organization? No, they're a recovery. Yeah, they're recovery, right? FEMA comes in with their big fat FEMA checkbook at the end of the day, right? So all the blame that FEMA got pushed on it during Hurricane Katrina was really kind of misplaced. Because they don't have like two million people just sitting around waiting for disasters. They're not, they're not an army. Okay? Their, their whole role is really mitigation and at the end of the, the incident, if it's a federally declared disaster, they'll bring their big federal checkbook, which those checks are going to bounce down the road or whatever, <laughs> uh, and they'll write a, uh, a check to reimburse you for your cost. So if your agency has to uh, evacuate because of a natural disaster or a terrorist incident or something that they declare a federal disaster, you can get reimbursed for a lot of the costs that's associated with your response. But you have to document all that. So having someone in finance and administration is tracking all those costs around us is hugely important. Key words. If there's an evacuation. Yeah. Got to declare the disaster. Yep, they don't come in unless it meets a certain dollar threshold and all that stuff. Okay, so we have all these things going on, right? We're transporting patients, we're moving patients out, we're calling in additional staff, we're arranging for supplies, 